talk about what happened to the Pinto and why we didn't bring it to No Name Nationals. As you can see the 302 Mercruiser. It's kind of wedged in there. And let's see, was it? I think I have the motor mounts taken out at this point. And it's kind of just sitting on. Actually, I don't know. There might be there might be a motor mount in there too. I don't remember. Uh, I think I left off with part six uh, on my uploads. I think there's some video that I have not edited from probably like a week before No Name Nationals when I just kind of hung it up and focused on getting the RV ready to go. Could have did a little earlier work on the RV and maybe not had as many troubles as, as I did on the way down there. <clears throat> Still kind of recovering from No Name Nationals, got pretty dehydrated, so kind of losing my voice a little bit. But <clears throat> so it's Wisconsin here, and once. Labor Day comes around, it's time to start packing up for winter. Not much gets done around here during the winter time. So this needs to get the hell out of my way. It's still on the blocks in my driveway. Uh, we're sitting in front of the Mustang right now in the garage. That needs to get the hell out of my garage. Um, So we don't have to rush to race the thing, but I'd like to start it, make it be able to move under its own power. So that means we gotta put the transmission in, the drive shaft, make some kind of motor mounts. I don't care what they are, pieces of angle iron with popcorn welds. That'll be fine with me. Um, That's kind of kind of the plan right now to make the physical object that'll hold the motor in the place that I want it. So we got to put the motor in the place I want it, which means I want to put the transmission in. We don't have the flywheel, the clutch, or pilot bearing in at all. We're just gonna slap it on with the wrong um, plate, bell housing plate in there just as mock-up bell housing and plate are already in here so we just got to feed the transmission up under the car bolt it on <clears throat> probably make the uh, cross member fit the transmission and then make the motor mounts so Right now we're kind of cleaning up the Acerod transmission. Stopped and got some more brake clean. Stuff goes away like water. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So let's get to it. <clears throat> so I pulled the Acerod out of the garage. Um, put the cover back on. A little axle of grease on the gasket. Uh, no new gaskets, no no seals. <clears throat> Got the slip yoke on the end from the original Granada. So we're just going to kind of clean this up. You can see I started already with what little brake clean I had left. So we'll give that a good scrub down. And are crawling out of the car. <clears throat> All right, we got it pretty well clean. Um, took and schmucked the input shaft full of grease. There go. A little bit of Lucas red and tacky. And uh, just taped a shop rag around it. Um, we'll keep that from flashing over with rust. So... 
I guess the next step is to uh, try to get it under the car. Okay, I find a broom and sweep out all the junk from under the car first. All right, well, got a little paint issue here now with the rust that I suppose happened when I was grinding on the manifold. All the hot particles landed on the paint, and now oh, that's rusting. That's that's awesome. Even in here, even on the plastic. Great. Valve covers are getting rusty. I do have the motor mounts in. As you can see, the, the bolt is just not wanting to go in. Same on this side. The uh, videos that I haven't shown yet. Just a lot of frustration. Um, probably not worth posting. But uh, as you can see, the engine is too far to the passenger side. You can't put the manifold on. And we got ample space on this side. Once the ample, uh, if we move it over, it's going to be tight next to the steering. Damage spot on my valve cover now. I so I need my hoist, and the hoist is on the trailer, stuck behind my other Mercruiser. Cruiser. I gotta figure figure out how to get that off of the trailer. I don't know if you can see. I got the S rod down there. Probably can't stick it on quite yet. I suppose it could try. What the hell? Let's give her a try. Okay, that wasn't so bad. It's nice that it's aluminum and light. Um, we got the bolts kind of finger started. Not sure all of them are engaged in threads. The bottom ones are. Uh, but we got issues already with with the motor being too far to the passenger side. Uh, you can see down here the starter. Well, I guess if we had the right plate in there, that wouldn't be hitting the frame. Um, we got, did you see that like wire tab that was on that one bolt? That's hitting, hitting the tunnel. Um, the drive shaft is not centered in the tunnel here. You can see that. Um, I have to find the cross member and see how that's gonna work out here. Put the motor mount on. This looks like an issue here with the cable. The speedometer cable is coming out right into the mount. I suppose it might be able to Flex over enough, but I don't know. Might be a non issue. We might be abandoning the original starter, or I mean, original speedometer. I don't know. So, this is the. I can't see up close right now, but I suppose that, that should reach just fine. Hopefully it's not getting destroyed. But you'll get a socket wrench and extension and get this thing buttoned down. And then I suppose I gotta go work on that other Mer Cruiser. Get my engine hoist back over here. Freaking intake manifold is stuck on that thing. I can't get it off. Alright, so we got Bell housing bolts mostly tighten. There's one up in the top right there that I can't get a socket on right now. Got the old Fox body transmission mount on here. So what I'm seeing is we probably got to move the engine forward a little bit. Um, if we want to use this mount. We got to Boy, look at all that dog hair. 
we got to widen these holes a little bit to match match the fox body mount um, and if we move forward a little bit we should be able to get up into the up into the original mounting spots as you can see we got to move over to the driver's side I don't know half inch or three quarters of an inch the way it looks to me so yeah let's get this mount widened maybe I'll uh, I don't know what I want to do with that. We'll start start by just widening it, widening it. Um, but we may have to go back with the slots too. But we'll start with widening. So yeah, let's get get our ratchet strap in here for now. Uh, I believe that was a vice grip garage trick I seen. We don't have a lot of places to hook to. Maybe we'll go up through the shifter boot hole. Hold it up somehow. So I can put my jack back in the garage. Alright, so I got the frame mounts out. Here's my custom one inch setback pinto mount. Um, you can see evidence of like some marring here and looks like the head of that bolt um, on the rebuilt uh, Mustang 2 mounts left an impression. So that was hitting and I believe not letting me line up my bolt hole well enough to get the bolt in. Uh, among other things, binding everything up, but that's an issue. <clears throat> All right, well, I made, went ahead and made a solid transmission mount. I copied it after this Fox body mount here. Um, but these holes are wider than the Pinto mount. Uh, and I, I just planned on drilling holes and bolting it to that. <clears throat> But I didn't realize that this is offset by a half inch um, from center. Uh, <clears throat> not sure if that's going to work. I think we might have to go into center. And I didn't leave enough meat here on that to be able to do that. So move it over. We're going to miss a hole. So I don't really want to drill into my pinto bracket. Uh, <clears throat> we'll have plans in the future. But I don't know if you recognize this piece of metal was my fixture for welding the nuts on the back of my uh, rear shackle spring holders. So <clears throat> we repurposed that steel. And there was a hole here. I just plugged that up. So... Not exactly the most structurally sound piece forward to back, but it's going to do what we need to do for now. <clears throat> so I think what I want to do, we'll bolt it up and see how it looks, but what I want to do is get the drive shaft put together and put that in there to make sure that that's going to clear a tunnel. <clears throat> okay, I got vice grips kind of holding this in the factory center, not center, half inch to the passenger side. And here's the yoke. Not a lot of clearance here. A whole lot of clearance over here. Uh, pretty good clearance right here. All up in here is good. So, <clears throat> gotta find a way to make sure the engine's facing straight forward now. 
So I'll go up there and see what I can do. All right, well, I think it's pretty much where it needs to be. Uh, about as good as it can get. I got pretty good clearance between the manifold and the fender there, quarter inch, I would say. I think it's mostly straight this way. Uh, this way, it's a little crooked, but we'll have to get some blocks under there and shim that up. Over here, there, what is that, an inch? Take the filter off. Got three eighths of an inch between here and the brake lines. Uh, we'll probably just throw some of that DEI shield crap on there for now, but <clears throat> I can see redoing all that. No point in having that go through there. So, um, wire harness, looks like it'll be good. Heater hose, looks like it's going to be good. So yeah, let's uh, get some drive shaft going here. One eternity later. All right, well, I didn't have a video of this as I'm editing my video to send out, but I did get the drive shaft put together. Although, I think I screwed up a lot of the U-joints. I gotta find a better method of doing that. Okay, there's a hammer and socket. And got it on there. Too long. So I'm gonna have to cut it down. I think maybe if I like drop the back wheels down and maybe if I drop the axle down it would go in, but I'd probably risk a chance of bashing the bashing the tail shaft there. cold you can hear that it's windy out i hate wisconsin man just it's like hell freezes over every year